So we moved up to painting all the other various bits on our giant and here's where things get a little bit more difficult. Uh, first of all, starting off with the wood, I'm not going to cover everything because it's all basically the same as this, just using different colors. And for this, dry brushed with flat earth and then use some heavy brown. Uh, painting it this way and now I have some buff mixed into that. Uh, key here is two things. First of all, I'm trying to add a little bit more of a gray color to the wood to make it more interesting. Uh, we have a lot of brown going on on this particular model so we want to break up that color as much as possible. Uh, secondly, the important part is this is so busy here with the uh, everything on this model. We have the wood and the straps and the fur. So we want a lot of contrast here to keep all these parts looking uh, differently. So we want a lot of uh, dark color between all these parts and then uh, up the contrast a little bit, have a good uh, sharp edge to them. So they all stand out from each other. Uh, one other thing I want to note is that all the fur here on his legs and his feet, um, I initially thought that it was on him, he, he was just a, a furry giant. But now after I painted all of it, I think it's actually supposed to be more like padding um, between all his wood armor and his skin. Because in some places it seems uh, way too thick to be just patches of hair on him, uh, especially behind the shield. So I'm actually going to go back and repaint that. I re I painted initially the same color as his hair, but uh, decided I'm going to go back paint that more like fur because if I leave it as hair, he's got a really hairy crotch and I really don't want to paint that. So there you go. It's pants painting time. Decided to concentrate on the lower legs mainly because uh, I want to be able to uh, mount the top half on to the legs and then I could use the legs to hold on to to paint the rest of the upper body because there's just too many it's too difficult to hold on to the upper body uh, just because the awkward shape so that's why we're working on the bottom half here almost done actually working on his uh, underroo area and this is a good opportunity to add some color to it you got all this little ragtag patchworks clothing loincloth thing that's probably going to be made out of tents and whatnot so we can add a little bit of color here do want to be careful we don't want to go crazy uh have all these bright intense colors just around his waist and then no color anywhere else and all the other browns that are on the model so i'm trying to keep them a little bit more muted i don't have bright red i don't have pure white they're all uh dialed down a little bit also we have to be careful that we don't add too many colors so I'm trying to keep it somewhat limited here we have green green you know yellow yellow and then red and red so uh, don't want every color in the rainbow but uh, painted some really terrible checkerboard pattern here kind of difficult to do on the uh, pinched surface folded surface but I did my best and you know adding a, a little stripey here very easy to do uh, but yeah, I'm almost done with this and then we'll start working on the top half. Taking a little break here. Um, at the really hard part of the build, and that's painting all the small little items, little teeth, doing all these bands, straps, uh, the shields and whatnot. So this really slows things down, just getting paint in all the nooks and crannies. And eventually what we're gonna do probably is go in there with some uh, black ink wash. Get a nice dark line to separate all these areas so they do stand out. Uh, another issue we're having is since I decided to paint as leather or natural colors, basically browns, trying to come up with different shades of browns for all these areas is uh, basically I'm slowly running out of color, uh, colors to use here. But uh, that's where we are currently at. And this little gap right here, this is the one part I had no easy way of fixing. These ropes simply don't line up. And 
I thought it'd be fine as is, but I decided to add a little trinket there to fill in the gap. That's a bell from a very, very old Games Workshop plastic skeleton kit. Always good for extra parts, skeleton boxes. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much um, that's where we are at now. And we got it taped up, glued together. I'm sorry, I can't show you the bottom all finished, but uh, I needed a handhold. This thing is very difficult to manage. Uh, I really wish I didn't attach the club and wait until the last minute to do that because it's just, it's really getting in the way trying to turn this thing around to paint it. But uh, I think we're gonna go on to the big par portion here, the fur, which is gonna be, uh, well, we'll just go into it and I'll discuss it there. Getting to the final big important parts here, painting up his furry mantle. And it's an important part because obviously it's uh, it's large, so whatever color we put on here uh, is really going to stand out on the miniature. And so I decided to add just a, a little bit of color here, not just go with straight brown or gray or something like that. Uh, started off with hull red, which is very, as you can see, reddish brown. Now I'm putting a, uh, well, let's, let's call it more of a heavy base coat. You can see it's somewhat dry brushing here, but not quite the same, but I want to cover up most of this. Uh, this is um, game color Beastie Brown mixed with a, just a little bit of the whole red to uh, you know, give it a little bit of a red tone. Because when I put on the whole red, it's uh, it was pretty, well, red, a little bit too red. And uh, with the succeeding layers that we're going to put on it, I want to take some of that out. So we just have a hint of it in the recesses. So I'm going to go over the whole process here. We're not going to dry brush everything. That would be naughty. So, but we're going to do it the first uh, coat here to get the solid color down. And then the next coat will start actually going in with the brush. And I'll show you how, how you, we can do uh, fur texture without necessarily dry brushing the whole thing. Stay tuned. We're gonna add a little bit of orange color to our fur so it matches the leather a little bit. We use somewhat the same combination there. So I got Parasite Brown mixed with Beastie Brown. I believe the leather was, uh, well, what was the leather now? You know, I can't remember off the top of my head. Never mind. I think it was Flat Earth with uh, Beastie Brown, but don't hold me to that. Or Parasite Brown, one of those. But anyway, see I'm trying to paint the raised areas here with this color. Start getting some depth to our fur. It's slightly thinned. So it's not quite dry brushing here. We're being a bit more precise, not super precise. I'm trying to use quick brush strokes so we get a bit more of a jagged texture effect on our fur. There we go, better example there. But this is gonna establish where we're gonna put all the other colors coming up after this. We've gone ahead and added some golden brown to our mixture, so we are moving up in our colors to something lighter, something more, a little bit more yellow. And there's a couple different ways to paint fur, and I kind of just decided I'm actually going to change how I'm doing this. But for the moment, you can see I moved, I even moved to a, a, um, a better tip brush. The one I was using before was split and I was purposely using a split tip brush so it would give me a more jagged pattern while I was doing this but now I want to be a bit more precise so I have a regular decent shaped brush and I'm mainly working on the front now we're gonna do the front this way and then for the back I suddenly decided we're gonna change this up so stay tuned for that one 
So for the back, um, I initially thought about doing something a little bit more unique than this, but uh, actually this should work out pretty fine. Uh, all I'm doing is, well, the exact same thing I did on the rest of the fur, but instead of going with that hull red and then a heavy dry brush of Beastie Brown and whatnot, and, so and so and so forth. Uh, I went back and did a, a really heavy dry brush of the Beastie Brown and Scruffulous Brown, if that's what I used. I have already forgotten. Uh, but basically, use uh, I lightened up the base coat, and then this area I'm going to highlight more. And now uh, I've worked in some beige, quite a lot of beige, you can see here. And you can see I'm putting it on pretty heavy in this spot. And then over here and around here, I'll just do a few little spots here and there, you know, just on the big raised area. So a lot lighter color here. And I guess it makes it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, this right here before it was looking a little bit too plain It needed something. So uh, here in the smaller portions, I think it's fine. We don't have to do much there, but definitely, yeah, with that back looks a lot better with some color variation to it. And all this took about 20 minutes to do. Not long at all. And only one layer of dry brush. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Painting his big old tree club. And basically most of it was fairly, it's just dry brushing essentially. A little bit cleaner in some of these cracks. Uh, try to pick uh, some browns that I haven't used before. Actually, I, I used beige brown, which I may have used before somewhere. Uh, but I try to highlight it with different colors. Nothing very exciting there. What I'm doing here now is something that I didn't think was going to work. Uh, but I just decided, what the hell, let me try it. Uh, the idea here is I wanted the, the base of the tree to be a darker color. Because, you know, this is the side that's going to be in the ground. It's going to be more moist. Dirt should be a darker color. I wasn't sure if I could translate that idea via paint and have people understand it, but I'm just dry brushing, more of a heavy base coat really, some olive brown, nice dark drab color, and I think it actually is working out pretty good. I like that look, having the dark end there, and it, it changes things up, so rather than just this you know, brown log with no variation. Uh, but there's some variation here. It makes the piece more interesting. Now, I don't want to do too much dry brushing here. Maybe I'll do a little bit, but I need to keep this dark. So we're not going to dry brush all the way up to khaki, whatever. Uh, may go back, do some washes on it. Uh, I'll play around with it a little bit, see what happens. And if anything of note comes up, I will definitely let you know few little finishing touches on our stump. A little bit of more green added. Want some, again, keeping with that idea of the, the moisture down here at this end. So we add a little bit of our moss and whatnot. Oop, a little bit too much there. Very small amounts here in proper places. That's important. Whenever you're going to do something like rust, or in this case, like algae, you know, Deep recesses. You want to put things where logically they would be. Off topic, but if you're ever doing paint chips, I see people do paint chips, you know, when they're practicing it and they just put them wherever. It's like, no, they go on the edges. That's where they logically would be, where things would get scratched off. Helps it look more realistic. So anyway, deep recesses for our little mossy look and don't want to do too much but it does add just a little hint you know a little something something onto our club would do some under here but um, you know this was the part underground so you're not gonna you're not gonna get it there you're only gonna get it on top I think we're just about done with this portion of it just a few odds and ends here and there and but uh, yeah, we're going to move on to the base really, really soon now. The new Alan Hale action figure. He sits down. He snacks. He sits down again. He farts. He drives. He comes with his own lunch. Action Alan Hale and Action Alan Hale's got soul separate. Do -do -do. Oh.